Hello indie game fans, so many awesome games released last month, so here are some that you might have missed, beginning with the throwback action platformer Lords of Exile, a classic Vania title if I ever saw one, looking and playing like those platformers of old as compared to the later Metroidvania entries. It's a solid linear title and nails the visuals and music, although the gameplay can feel a little dated, but I believe that's the point. So if you loved games like Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon and want more, this is worth looking into. Here's a trippy narrative simulator game named Corpo Nation The Sorting Process, which is in the vein of games like Papers, Please, in which you play as an employee in a corporation that has you sorting samples, earning credits and spending them on whatever you want. However, something darker is afoot since it's an almost dystopian kind of setting and where you can intentionally sort the samples wrongly to sabotage the company due to the influence from external parties, which results in an interesting cat and mouse kind of game. As such, if you love narratively interesting games, this is one to check out. Ultros is just a weird game, a self-styled psychedelic metroidvania with one of the trippiest art styles that I have seen, which to be fair, does make it stand out, but can also be difficult to see what's going on during the action. However, what is even more interesting is its roguelite-ish nature with a time loop element so you can adventure and get upgrades metroidvania style, but then it resets you and takes away those powers. However, the world does shift and is not procedurally generated so by resetting, you are actually advancing the story, resulting in one of the most unique metroidvanias out there, in which I have never seen anything like this game before. There's also, strangely, a plant growing system which can create platforms or grow and break through walls, which again feeds into the level design and progression, making this super weird and interesting. Japanese always seems to be near the top of lists of languages that gamers want to learn, which of course has to do with Japan's long history in making excellent games from Nintendo to Capcom, Sega and more, and thus go back to the days of importing Japanese games which did not have an official English language version, and in the modern day has an increased interest due to the uptake of popularity of anime. So if you ever wanted to learn but never got the chance, perhaps Shashingo learn Japanese with photography will be the game for you. It's pretty self-explanatory since you are taking photos of things in the beautifully rendered cartoony Japanese city, getting the name, pronunciation, Japanese characters and English translation along with some vocabulary and how to use it in a sentence. Languages are not my thing, but this seems like a good way to learn, with there even being in-game kanji characters with translation that you can practice reading before getting the pop-up with translation. I suppose it's perfect if you intend to visit Japan on holiday since it's the same kind of city setting that you will get if you visit larger cities like Tokyo and should be more functional rather than learning from books and shows the range of indie games in 2024. This next title has been very successful, but I would still consider Window Kill to be a hidden gem since I don't really hear anyone talking about this twin stick shooter in which the gimmick is that it takes place on a fake in-game desktop and where the window that your ship is in constantly closes in on you. However, shooting at the edges expands the playfield which allows you to see further and to anticipate where enemies are coming from and how to take them out. The gimmick alone is worth a mention, although you can see the seams since this is essentially one playing field like a normal twin stick shooter but obfuscated by the various windows which constantly change in size. But as a gimmick, it is very clever indeed. Surprise releases or shadow drops generally don't end well for indie games since awareness of their game's release tends to be lacking, but one that has kind of pulled it off is Penny's Big Breakaway, 
which did make use of a Nintendo Direct presentation to announce the launch of their game. Perhaps they were more concerned about Switch sales since on Steam, this has about 430 reviews as of recording, which is not bad but not huge as well, considering this is from some of the people that made Sonic Mania, which has almost 20,000 Steam reviews as a point of comparison. This game is a 3D platformer in which you play as a street performer and her sentient yo-yo, running away from the Emperor's Penguin Army, unraveling the mystery of the cosmic string and to clear her name. Vibrant and is one of the better 3D platformers in recent memory, a genre that doesn't get that many entries these days, even in the indie game space, so if you love it, you know what to do. I know, I know, roguelite deck builders are getting old at this point, but yet, indie developers still manage to innovate on the core concept in which Spell Rogue is the title of interest here. You will notice that you are rolling dice in this game, but it's not a dice builder like Astra six-sided oracles, but rather, you are instead slotting these dice into the cards, allowing you to somewhat manage the randomness like in a Euro-style board game, so for fans of the genre, I think you'll find something interesting here. This next game might just be the rabbit that developer League of Geeks has pulled out of the hat, since Solium Infernum is a 4x strategy game that is a remake of a game from 2009 and has sold a decently well, sitting at 700 Steam reviews as of recording, since that is after the developer laid off 50% of their staff to the tune of 31 people back in December 2023, pulling the plug on their other early access title Jump Light Odyssey at the time. The Prince of Darkness is missing, leaving the Arch Fiends to fight and backstab each other in order to ascend to the Infernal Throne. There are 8 Arch Fiends to choose from and even 2 to 6 player multiplayer support, so expect plenty of politicking and strategy, especially if you are playing with your soon to be ex friends and has a gorgeous look as well. Here's an interesting title that I would best describe as a plate up like, since that game was roguelite overcooked, and feed the cups as plate up but with drinks instead of food. You're running a drink store with your friends in co op, having to move about the kitchen, unpacking and preparing ingredients, while taking orders and prioritizing which order to serve first. In between each day, there are random upgrades that you can choose from, roguelite style, which should increase your efficiency, but be careful not to rack up debts or to overstress yourself. It is still in early access, but already has quite a bit of content, but that's only about 60% of the total content planned for the game, which should be added over the next 8 to 12 months. After 10 years of peace, the evil Dimer has returned. <laughs> I honestly love that a game like this can exist, since the developers have somehow decided to pay tribute to the CDI Zelda games, which are infamous for how terrible they are, probably since Nintendo did not make these, instead licensing Zelda out, which is why AZ The Jewel of Faramore is such a curiosity. For the most part, it's a decent side-scrolling action platformer, but where it shines is the animated cutscenes, since the designs and animations of the characters are truly something to behold. It's just so weird and interesting and I'm glad that it exists, with the kicker of course being that the developers named themselves CDI Games, which is a homonym of the CDI console and data media, so extra points to them. If you love games like this, watch this video for 35 upcoming action platformers.